coming up, we're going to show you how to use the Sherline lathe and mill to produce a floating washer for the bottom of a Graham supercharger. We'll also tell you why this is being done. This is the floating washer. The floating washer is found in the bottom of the Graham supercharger. We will show you what it's for. We're going to show you how to make it. We're also going to show you why we have to make one as well as give you a little bit of the backstory about what happened in this supercharger that caused the repairs that are being done to it at this time. Stay tuned for more information. Floating washer here goes at this position in the supercharger. So we got the supercharger upside down. So it is sitting on a pinned washer, but you'll notice something. Look at this, it's wandering around. We'll explain exactly why that's the case right now. In this case, we've rebabbited it, which we'll show you in a moment. So this is a rebabbited supercharger. That meant that also. The shaft was turned down a little bit, which means the floating washer doesn't fit and we have to have a new one. The other thing about the floating washer here, even if it did fit well back in the day and we hadn't turned it down, one of the things that happens is these often get a groove worn in these shafts because oil filters were optional back in the 1930s and as a consequence, a lot of cars were run without clean oil. And without clean oil, this floating washer will wear a groove into a steel shaft. More than it'll wear itself out. Of course it's wearing itself out some, but it gets off center, wears a groove in the shaft at the speed of the shaft spinning six times crankshaft speed. So sleeving the bottoms of these shafts is pretty common. Now besides the floating washer, the last piece you have is you have this special washer that goes on the flats. So this rides with the shaft, the floating washer floats in between and the pinned washer is below. That is how it's put together. Now we'll show you what a Babbitt job looks like. Let's take a quick look at the supercharger shaft. This one had been done previously, the reason it's being redone is because unfortunately it was run about 100 miles with gasoline in the oil, thinning the oil way out and damaging the Babbitt in it so bad we had to rebabbit this one. Down at the bottom, previously sleeved it. This is all for the Babbitt job. So here, here, here. So the top, the middle, and the bottom, all been turned down. So you can see all that. So they've got beautiful surfaces for the Babbitt to ride on. Now we're gonna show you the Babbitt in the supercharger. So you can see down in here, we got brand new Babbitt. That's been done at that point. As I said, this is a pinned washer, could be removed. We also have, turn this around and get it. You can see the brand new Babbitt is in here. That's the second bearing, so that's the bottom. That's the middle bearing. And I'll show you the top one. There's a beautiful job of the brand new Babbitt at the top. So all three of those bearings had to be rebabbitted. And they have been done in the supercharger. And the shaft has been turned down so it fits, so everything is in original tolerances. Now we have to do the job of making that floating washer. Right here we're at the combination Sherline mill and lathe. This part I have here is a fully adjustable four jaw chuck. I me to center up a piece of silicon bronze. Now I just left it in the chuck from the last time I worked on it, so it means when I put it in the lathe here in a little bit, it's going to be perfectly centered still. This is already the right outside size. Let's check that. We're making another one of these floating washers. So let's look at the size. Right here we got one inch, 377 thousandths. Take our floating washer, 
and that's one inch, 374 thousandths. That extra thousandth and a half on each side of the floating washer will not hurt anything, so I'm not even going to be concerned about that. What I'm going to be concerned about is getting the right center diameter and cutting the piece off, and then ultimately we've got to put those oil slots in both sides. So let's get the machine altered into a lathe and get started. shaft size that we got to deal with, that's portion down here, comes up to 400 and about, oh, close, 58 thousandths. We have here a drill bit, which is 450 thousandths, and that's a 2964 drill bit. So we're going to drill our hole out, we've already pre-drilled it before some, but we'll drill it out some. If we have to, we'll switch to a smaller bit if we've got to do a little bit of that. But right now it looks like we might be able to just do it with this bit and get it done. And then what we're going to have to do is enlarge it with a boring bar to make it big enough to go on our shaft. All right, showing about 420 RPM. Try and hold on to this at first just to make sure the taper sets. And while that's drilling nice, I think I'm going to go to a smaller bit because it's going to be kind of noisy. Check our hole size with our gauge here. Okay, the original washer here comes out at 155 thousandths. It's really between 54 and 55. We're going to call that 155. We're going to remark, adjust it out, 
don't want this going very fast. Now we're going to do a cutoff down to about 300. Get a big black sharpie here and mark over a bit. So you got something to mark against. We're going to set our 155 in here. Our caliper. We're going to real carefully come down and mark it. So there we've got a mark where we've got to be for 155 thousandths to cut it off. tour you can see that we've got this set up so we're going to put the oil slots into the floating washer. We're using a Sherline rotary table with the modification I made so you can look at it from the front as to where you are plus the dial on the side. It's also on our angle plate assembly that could be tilted. In this case we've got that at 90 degrees but we've tilted our head for our mill over so we are about 20 degrees from vertical and we have brought in our x-axis towards us to put in the shape that we want which is basically the shape you see here as long as we get that shape out to about the distance that Graham had it, it's going to work beautiful. We have to do four of these around, and we flipped over and do four on the back. But the four on the back are 45 degrees over. So pretty much you're providing quite a bit of oil to both sides of the floating washer. When we do that, the floating washer is all done. So you can see you can make quite a, I'd call it rather fancy setup here. And we'll use a grinding stone to actually perform this cut to finish the floating washer. <laughs> 